Astrotometry log. It is February 4th, 2011. It is approximately 0606 UTC. This is a follow-up number two on the earthquake watch from February 2nd. The solar x-rays have remained low. We've had a few little spikes that could have but probably wouldn't have broken up the incoming geomagnetic activity, which is just now starting. We had this period from February 3rd to February 4th that was very, very nominal. This is the Earth's BB BZ component, and it's just now starting to shift in the opposite direction. It's normally somewhere around 4 and it's now around negative 5, bouncing up and down. Now when this normalizes, the area under this curve could be associated with a sympathetic shift in the Earth's crust. Now it's not always the case, but the solar wind speed that is normally associated with these events has not started yet. And there's a good reason for this. This was expected to start on the 3rd. This should be, um, well, normally it would be up here around 400 or 500. And what happened is there was a coronal mass ejection that I had missed that was Earth-directed, very small coronal mass, direct, uh, mass ejection. And this is called a, a halo CME. And I'll slow this down so you can see it a little better. But this is a very small one, but it is Earth-directed. And the way we know it's Earth-directed is because it shows on the halo. It shows all the way around the sun. And it comes out. And it's going to go backwards here in a second. And you'll see it going back in. And this CME, um, according to spaceweather.com, has a 60% probability of hitting the Earth's upper atmosphere and sparking off auroras. Now, the other effect that this had is that the disturbance from the coronal hull, this coronal hull was fairly significant, and the disturbance from these holes in the solar corona moves much, much slower than a coronal mass ejection. The coronal mass ejection is a uh, sort of a high velocity particle emission. And as it moves across the, the heliosphere, it curves. And so it's this curvature that the path of the solar wind takes from the coronal hole. And when there's a coronal mass ejection, it only takes uh, two, sometimes three days to reach the Earth. And it pushes through the particle emissions from the coronal hole. And so it could push this stream out of the way so that it doesn't reach the Earth. Or it could accelerate it. Now, since it's late, since the geomagnetic activity did not arrive as expected, I'm guessing that the coronal mass ejection that was back on the second has pushed the geomagnetic effect of the particle storm uh, either ahead of time or out of the Earth's path. And so we may be clear from the influence of this particular coronal hole. Now, also, notice that the hole has grown across the equator. It originally started up here as this thing that's very similar in shape to the Arabian plate. But it has grown down across the equator and it is nearly meeting this active region, 11150, which was the source of this coronal mass ejection, most likely source. And so there are these magnetic fields that extend from the Earth to the Sun that are the reason we see these similarities in the features of the seismic activity. In astrotometry, it's understood that 
these fields carry the earth through time and that the sun is the primary time axis and so astrotometry provides a completely new model for what the sun actually is and in sorting this out with the correlation between the seismic activity and these holes we have to consider the nature of these fields and this is a potential field surface model from SDO from the SDO project that simulates what would be the magnetic activity now in astrotometry the electromagnetic force is actually more than one force in astrotometry the magnetic force and the electrical force are separate and the electrical force actually um, is an emergent property of the underlying magnetic activity and so in that model in astrotometry this uh, the reason these spots appear dark is because the time space phase of the emission of the what would be the photon is uh, unlocked is out of its lock and that is why there is a discontinuity in the translation of the plates through their time space and so there is a uh, inconsistency in the hypertime translation of the material on the earth and this is a very very difficult thing to understand uh, conceptually um, you know even with the three-dimensional model uh, higher dimensional model hybrid that I'm sort of trying to flesh out um, but the the bottom line is that the coronal mass ejection may have uh, pushed the solar wind that would have been associated with the hypertime hypertime translation anomaly associated with the seismic events out of the way so we may not see the effect of this particular coronal hole or we could see it farther south we could see instead of seeing it here we might have a situation where the fields carry the effect the magnetic part of the electromagnetic force moves the effect to a different part of the earth and so we may see uh, an effect down here uh, rather than where the disturbance originally would have hit if it wasn't for the coronal mass ejection and so this is a very complicated dynamic system and usually 80 percent of the time these coronal holes are associated with earthquakes there's an 80 percent correlation but there's more holes than there are big earthquakes and so no, understanding the dynamics of the situation is the key and these are this is just a theory this is just my analysis of the situation as it stands presently but I would say there's probably a still probably a 40 percent chance of a quake up in this area and maybe uh, one down in this area so I would say 40% uh, chance of a large northern hemisphere earthquake and then probably a 60% chance of one in the northern or southern hemisphere so um, I don't know which at this point because of the the dynamic here it's probably either going to be in this area or in this area one of the other one of the two places um, it could be both but probably not and so the uh, shape of this originally uh, it may have been uh, this may have been the, the the history of this particular disturbance in other words historically there may have been a quake in this area that caused this electromagnetic reverberation through time space this being the return of it and as it returned it was uh, it could be that it's going to be deflected to another position that's down more over in this other area and so uh, time is going to tell here I'm not going to cancel the watch yet um, I'm still 
wondering what's going to happen with the electromagnetic disturbance. Um, it's just now starting. And so it could be that it was the brunt of it was deflected, but we don't know that yet. And so I'm going to continue to watch until the 6th. Thanks for watching.